my books are intended to meet you in that moment and give you a hug. Um, everything I write. So just go on and give the book a big hug and it's there for you. These books are little cheerleaders. And that's, that's the way I want you to feel when you're reading the book as though you have like a personal cheerleader right with you through whatever you're going through. And I go so far as to say I'm right here. So if you want me in real life as your cheerleader, just give me a call and I'll, and I'll hang out with you on the phone. And, um, you know, I wrote these books just for that, you know, those moments in my own life where yeah. I needed a cheerleader. And people have shown up for me and like, okay, how do we put that in motion so people actually have cheerleaders when they need one? Um, yeah. Maybe outside your family or your friends or whatever, you need a you need a, an outside pair of eyes in the situation to kind of help you out. So yeah, I, I, I wrote them. I wrote the success guidebook, namely to redefine success and help us redefine success for ourselves personally and professionally, because I'm, I'm 55, I'm a mother of four sons, and success is all over the place. Uh, and it's not the dollars in your pocket and the analytics and what you do and all these things. Sometimes it's as simple as a feeling you have or a smile on your face or yeah. a smile on somebody else's face because you've helped them or whatever it is. So we have these little successful moments and I like to call them success stacking. Ooh, success stacking. I love that. You can grab onto these little moments and feel the success instead of looking at your bank account and going, I am awful, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is, right? I mean, I, I've had so many moments in my life like that where I'm like, I'm not making enough money. My title isn't right. The book isn't selling enough, you know, on and on and on, all these negative things. And I like to help people flip them around in a gratitude like way and give yourself a giant hug, give the book a hug, give whatever it is you need to give a hug and just say, you know, I'm enough. I am, yes. I have value, I have worth, I have love, I have all these things in life and I am successful. And Absolutely. Yeah. I think that if our thoughts align with our emotions, then our life is so much better. If we, <laughs> yeah, if, an emotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like positive emotions, what's defined as positive emotions, right? Um, and I read somewhere that if we change our intrusive negative thoughts to positive thoughts, mm -hmm. then it there would be less depression in our lives, which I do believe it. I understand depression is a condition that, you know, some people have yeah. and we all have something, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Maybe many things. <laughs> many okay. things. Yeah. Yes. I know I have anxiety yeah. and, um, but, you know, whenever I that wants to creep in, I'm like, let's flip the thought of, oh, my gosh, you know, like you were saying, my checkbook, my bills and everything. And I'm like, breathe and just be grateful for what you have. And I know that you write your books thinking about gratitude, change and success. Yeah. So what inspired you to be motivated by these three big, amazing words, gratitude, change and success there's uh, number one there's such big topics that it seems like no one can ever get a grip on them and i'm like you know we need to help people out in these moments to help people navigate change to help people navigate fear to help people feel enough and so forth the yeah. second big thing though that really motivated me um i'm i have been resuscitated twice from life-threatening food allergies i've had food i'm 55 like i said and i have i've had life-threatening food allergies since my late 20s after a pregnancy mm -hmm. and so i've i have a life-threatening condition on board every day every time i eat something and so forth and you know it's made me feel very much less than in moments and have anxiety in social settings and things like that so that's the, that's the second thing the third thing is my father was a huge influence in my books he passed away in 2018 but he, yeah, is a bummer because he was a great human. Um, but he had a stroke in 2004, um, right in the middle of the living room floor in Minnesota in his house. He had a stroke. And everything that followed after that queued up for the Best Ever You Network. It queued up for the books and so forth because he survived things that you just most people don't survive. And in the way he survived and in his attitude, um, his yes. attitude was so 
inspiring because I remember feeling like crap um, with my food allergies and thinking, oh, woe is me, boo-hoo, you know, kind of thing and walking around stomping my feet and feeling miserable. And there he was in a rehab facility from having survived strokes and was on the mend and all this stuff. And they wheeled him into this speech therapy session. And my mom and I were in there and the nurse said, okay, we're going to play the alphabet game. And he, I mean, he was pretty debilitated from what happened to him. And she said, A, and he said, aardvark. And my mom were like, my mom and I were like, huh, that's a strange <laughs> word. It must be like drugs heavily on board or something. I don't know. But B was benevolent. C was courage. D was determination. E was excellent. F is a swear word. I've changed to faith and goodness, happiness, <laughs> integrity, joy, kindness, love. M was movies. O was open-minded, P was platypus, and on and on and on. And that became the basis in that exact moment for Percolate. Um, I wrote it in my journal. That's my, this is my first book. It's a Hay House book. It was Percolate, the ABCs of life originally. And now it's Percolate, let your best self filter through. And on the cover are some of the words that he, that he talked about in that moment. And that made me just tune in and be like, oh, okay, I get it. We fight for our survival. We're resilient. We learn how to navigate change. We roll with the punch. We do all these things. And we also, in turn, share our stories so that other people don't feel alone and we help them heal and all of these amazing things. Um, I just believe we are here to help each other be our best and their best. Yeah, we are on the same page. I always say we're, I'm here and I stayed after my counselor journey to love and help others. Like I knew it before intellectually, but then after my cancer healing journey, I was like, you know, when you face your own mortality, I was yeah. like, oh yeah. And I'm going to like, you know, like you're saying, we're going to go and take action and do it and not just say it. Right. Yeah. 